the take home today, if you change your perception and emotional response to life situations, you can change your cellular environment. This is the most sustainable, long-term, impactful way to heal the physical body as well as prevent disease. Healing, therefore, is a process of spiritual growth. Today we're talking about the psycho-spiritual basis of disease, right? And I have dot, 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 and healing because it's one and the same, right? If we can understand the psycho-spiritual pathways into the body and how disease manifests, then this is the same pathway that we're going to utilize for our healing approaches, correct? The spiritual plane, when we see imbalances in the energetics of the spiritual plane, if unaddressed, then they will manifest in the emotional mental bodies. Yeah? If left unaddressed, then we will see them progress and develop into ailments in the physical body. Right? This is the etiology or the pathway. Yeah? Anyone in here found themselves like in the same relationship with like many different people? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Or have you found yourself like you change jobs but then there's a similar feeling or experience in that job? Yeah. So this is the thing is that, you know, it's almost like life will give you situation after situation after situation for you to learn some deep karmic lesson. Yeah? And if you don't get the lesson, you're gonna get more situations and opportunities to learn that lesson. And some of us will die, you know, look look around, I guarantee you someone in here knows somebody that didn't get it and repeated a pattern throughout their whole life and went to the grave with that pattern, right? But some of us, this blessed, amazing minority of us in here, yes, that includes you, have chosen to be aware, to live consciously, to learn about these energetic patterns so that we can address them. Yeah? Okay, so your personalized prevention plan. So this is just something fun I put together because I am the predominant, so I like take homes and I like to apply what I learned, right? So here you go. Take a look at the patterns in your body. Which house are you falling in? What doshas are predominantly involved? Which doshas are involved right from the get-go? Which ones come in later on, right? Take a look at some of these patterns. Then identify parallel patterns in your emotional state and your response to life situations. Then you identify your opportunities for spiritual healing. Then we attend to the body first. Why? Because it's easier. This work is hard. It's this. Right? So in the meantime, let's start with the body, right? So if you can attend to these patterns in the body, I guarantee you, you're likely already attending to them in the emotions in the mind as well, because energy, you can bring it in in infinite ways, right? So if I'm shifting my diet, or I'm shifting my asana practice, I'm shifting my pranayama, I'm shifting the people that I choose to hang around, I'm already attending to the emotional and mental body, right? So then, we have all these different practices, diet, yoga, pranayama, etc., etc., we didn't list them all here. Then you attend to the mind and emotions. So, our feelings are functional, guys. These are revealing to you what is going on. So I have what I call the category of eh, feelings. I don't really know how to type that out but let's call them unpleasant feelings for now, right? All unpleasant feelings that you have are there to reveal to you an unmet need of yours. I feel frustrated. Why? Go down into it. I feel sad. Why? I feel angry. I feel disappointed. I feel depressed. Any of these feelings that are anxious, whatever, like somewhere deep down, if you process and process and process with a therapist or with your best friend or, you know, whoever, you can usually get down to the root of what need is here that is not met, yeah? And so this is where the, this, you know, modern psychiatric practices, you can see how they play into this too, right? We can use all tools that are available to us. 
So unmet needs reveal what? Energetic patterns. And energetic patterns, if they're unmet needs, then these are energetic patterns that are unharmonious or disharmonious, unnourishing, I made that one up, degenerative, or in other words, pathologic. Yeah? So don't ignore it if when you go to work, you're like, God, I want to kill myself. <laughs> right? Don't ignore it if, you know, you're in a relationship and you're like, oh, don't touch me. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to ignore it. You want to pay attention. So we have a tendency in our culture and our society to plow through it. Right? And most of us aren't even paying attention to what our feelings are. Right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, I have to do this thing and I have to do it. So it doesn't matter that I maybe feel frustrated or anxious about doing it. And I'm not going to take the time because I know I have to do it. So why bother dealing with why am I frustrated or anxious and getting to the root cause of that? Well, because if you can get to the root cause of that, then you can brainstorm ways that you can better support yourself and meet your needs in that process, in that relationship, in that career, right? And then you're actually shifting the energetic patterns when you're meeting your needs for healing. Simple, yeah? Uh, congruency. This is such an important one, right? So, you know, when you have all of what's happening here in the mind, and then you've got all of what's happening here in the heart space, right? So we've got this six and seven chakras, and, we, and mainly six, and then we've got the fourth chakra, right? All of this comes together, and then we exert our will, our decision-making, our choice happens through the fifth chakra. And we always talk about the throat chakra or being related to communication. How many of you heard the term word sound power? How many? So it's similar to that. Like, if you're coming from a place where this is matching up and lining up nicely with this, then there is more power behind this, and you manifest more quickly what your desired intention is, and more robustly and easily, right? So your words and your actions, we want to line up with your intentions, your feelings, your thoughts. This beautiful purity between all of them, right? That is called congruency, yeah? So, Gayatri Mantra, what are we saying? Om Bhur, Om Bhugaha, Om Swaha, Om Maha, Om Janaha, Om Tapaha, Om Satyam, Om Tatsavipurvanenyam, Virgo Devasya Dimahi, Diyo Yona Prachodayat. So, what are we asking for here? We're talking the seven chakras. We want purity amongst them, right? And then they also correlate to the greater planes. So, you know, the earth plane, the atmospheric plane, the solar plane, the spiritual plane beyond the sun, right? There's this beautiful correlation. So what is Gayatri really about? And it's asking for enlightenment or purity amongst that. It's about congruency. Does that make sense? So if you are in a place where you have internal conflict or where you are in your heart space does not match what you're thinking, Oh, I really want to be a yoga therapist, and I really love to do this work, and I really hate my job. Now you have to stay here because you need to make money. Hmm. Then the action is also mismatched. I'm going to work, I'm choosing to work, and I'm hating it the whole time. Right? Internal conflict. Right? So if you have any area in your life where you're experiencing incongruency or internal conflict, Gayatri Mantra is a really nice mantra to call forth that purity. Right? But of course, you have to work on it. Right? You have to work on being aware of what is here in this black box that I don't pay attention to very much. What are my unmet needs? How can I shift my perspective? The really beautiful thing about this work is, you know what? Mentally, we're so flexible. I guarantee you, if I give you any situation right now, you could probably come up with at least three to five perspectives on it, if not 10, right? Well, I could see it from this side and this side and this side, right? So here's the thing. You find out what's here. You walk into what's here. Just pick the one that matches this one. 
and stand behind it and then make your words and your actions match you know and then you have this situation where you are already naturally without worrying about vata pitta kapha attending to your unmet needs attending to unheard energetic patterns and healing on a psycho spiritual plane that will i promise you have incredible effects on the body yeah so you know you attend to the body then you attend to the mind and emotions and then you practice and bada boom bada bang all of a sudden <laughs> you're healed Emotions have distinct neurobiophysiological profiles and responses on the cellular level, right? So like we're just starting to understand and study that the heart emits neurotransmitters in a very similar way that we understand the mind to, right? We're just figuring this out, but the sages knew it way back then, right? So what I'm trying to talk about here is look, you know, let's say that you go through life and you're dissatisfied. Right? Dissatisfied has its own unique biological profile, even on the cellular level, right? So I'm dissatisfied. I'm dissatisfied with this, I'm dissatisfied with that, I'm dissatisfied with this, what I'm wearing, where I live, who I'm in a relationship with, right? So then what happens? I've got all this substance D, let's say. <laughs> substance D. <laughs> right? And then what happens on the cellular level? Our cells are so malleable and adaptive and incredible that the cell says, hey, there's a lot of substance D around and I want to survive. So guess what? I'm going to upregulate my receptors for substance D. I'm going to create more and more receptors for substance D because it's in plentitude. And then I'm going to actually change all of my internal workings to kind of tweak how the internal processes of the cell happen so that they are driven off of the substance D. Right? That makes sense on the survival level, right? So what happens when then one day I experience satisfaction? So I like that song running in my head. Can't get no. Anyways, so you got little substance S that peeps through, right? Ooh, substance S is around. But what, there's no receptors present really for substance S. They've been down-regulated because it hasn't been around for a really long time. So this is why every discipline, every discipline towards happiness is a discipline. It takes practice. It takes time. You cultivate more and more and more substance S, that cell needs a little bit of time to start down-regulating those receptors for substance D and up-regulating the receptors for substance S, right? So, you know, we expect instant change these days. Give me a pill, make it feel better, all that kind of stuff. And this is why you guys all practice yoga and all of these other things. And you notice there is a shift over time, right? It's because it takes a little bit of time for our bodies to be able to um, rewire themselves to be functioning from different um, emotional perspectives yeah so stay with it thank you guys for being such an attentive engaged audience